How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. In one of my previous videos, I announced I was going to give away three Steam keys to the winners. Uh, all you had to do was like the video and comment. And we got 30 something comments, but we had a couple of duplicate duplicate comments and it's only one person. No matter how many times you comment on the video, I'm only going to count your name once in this competition. So I thought also um, a good way for me to do this competition is to put a, a Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial out on how to do a random winner competition when when you're in a situation like me. So here's my situation. I know a lot of these people. I know probably most of these people that I've seen comment on other videos, hang out in the Discord server. So I can't just like pick three randomly. Even if I tried, there would be bias, right? So I'm going to have the computer pick for me. I, I, don't want, I don't want this on my hands. It's going to be randomized. I'm not going to edit this video. O OBS right to YouTube. All right, no editing on this one. So uh, let's go for it then. Um, basically, I'll show you. I'm going to announce the winners first, and then those who want to stick around for the tutorial can stick around. So let's check out what we got going on over here. So this is the debug menu. We're in the debug menu now of this game. So if I hit spacebar, we're going to get um, some particle effects uh, and animation, and we're going to get a name out of all those uh, in the the array that I that I buried in there, that I pushed in there. So I'm going to hit spacebar one time, and that's going to be the first winner. Then I'm going to hit spacebar a bunch of times, and then the set when I stop, that's going to be the second winner. And then I'm going to do it the third time a whole bunch of times. That'll be the third winner. I only have three keys. The dev only gave me three keys to give away. So here we go. First is the first space bar. Ready? Drum roll. Winner is... The Human Sonicu. I was going to write it down, but I could just watch this video. Okay, cool. So the H Human Sonicu, you are the winner of the first Steam key. Congratulations. Now here we go for the second winner. I'm going to smash it a bunch of times. And then whenever I just arbitrarily stop... That's what we're gonna ready. Yeah. Mage Art Green Dragon, you are the second winner of the Steam key for the RPG Maker game. All right, here we go. Third winner, last one. I only have one more key to give out, but the reviews on this game are mediocre. I played it. I thought it was pretty good, but people thought it was average. But hey, it's a pretty decent game. So the winner for this last Steam key, drum roll. Rip headphone users! Ugh. Kyle Devine! You're the third winner. Thank you everybody for watching. If you just wanted to know the winners for the giveaway. Now everybody else who's interested in the, the tutorial, I'm going to put a note tag so you guys can jump to this and skip the winner if you want to just read the tutorial. Okay, so the tutorial. Congratulations all the winners. Thank you everybody who participated and leaving a comment. Love you guys all. Alright, so the tutorial. Um, basically, very simple. Make a new object. Call it whatever you want. It's all arbitrary. We're, I put in some... Um, uh, let me zoom in so you guys can get a better look. There we go. So, basically, we're just defining all our potential winners. We're going to use randomize the function. That way, it lets us... Uh, maybe I can bring this down a hair. There we go. We're just going to randomize this. This is going to generate a, a random seed because computers aren't really good at random at all. It's going to just do a bunch of math on a set number, and that number will stay the same depending on when you launch it or depending on several things, but basically it's going to be predictable. So it, like when you launch it, it'll always predict, start the same. So if you count the, the, like the distance from the time that, you've, uh, that you launched it, you can predict what the random number is going to spit out in a second from now, in, in a, min a minute from now, in two steps from now. However you want to predict it, you can predict it. So if you throw this little function, randomize, it basically does an additional randomized step that is a lot harder to predict. It's basically now you can't count, you can't, you know, predict the number. Anyway, you want to do that, especially if you're doing a random C generation in like a, um, in, in your games or whatever. Moving on, we're de uh, defining a new variable, random winner. I'm setting it to, uh, to a random range between zero and the maximum number of people who have uh, entered in the competition, the people who have left comments. So I've rounded, uh, random range will return a, a real value. Um, it will return, um, you know, like 
25.766372592. So you want to round that up. So that's why we're rounding this entire thing, encapsulating it that. We're making a new Boolean value just to use as a switch so we can toggle when we want it. Uh, when we switch to our debug menu, you won't, you may, you may not even need this in yours, but I'm doing it. So when I toggle to my F8 menu, I go to my debug menu. It doesn't automatically show the first winner without me pressing spacebar first. So show time equals false, setting a Boolean value right there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, um, we're going to declare a new array. This is going to store all of our values. So we're going to say contestants equals a blank array, contestant zero. Uh, then you just put in parentheses if you want to store it as a string. So I'm storing every contestant by the name that they've uh, you know put on their YouTube name uh, inside the string as an array so they're all in the same array val uh, but just under a different value so then what you can do optionally is have a default one if you don't want to do the boolean uh, switch thing but uh, it's better to do the switch way so you don't need a step but you do need a draw so what we're going to be doing here is basically just getting a random number we're setting a font that's you could just pick a font pick the color of your font and, and align it if you want it. Um, then what we're doing is we're saying, if we press the space bar, then set that Boolean value, the, the switch, the showtime switch to true, because if showtime is true, we're gonna draw, we're gonna draw text. So this draw text shadow is something, uh, some code I picked up and it'll take a lot longer to, to, to describe the entire code. So um, if you don't have that already, you know, uh, from resources online, you could just use draw text. So just use draw text right here. Um, I skipped past this thing because we referenced showtime right here, so we're going to go back up to here. So when we press spacebar, we turn that Boolean value showtime to true. We also say random winner, we're going to round you know, this thing. The same thing that we declared on the create, we're also just re-randomizing it right here every time we press spacebar. Then we're going to play sound effects, optional. Um, particle effects that I've shorthanded, always optional to do that sort of thing, but it really adds to a, you know your game if you don't have an animation or sound effects or you know that stuff, it's not as cool or flashy. So here's how it controls. If the switch is on, then we're going to draw text on the draw phase, which is we're going to declare our X, our Y, where you want it to be at. I'm saying room width divided by two, so however wide it is, just divide it by half. Room height, whatever, however tall it is, divide that by half. Take that as your X and Y value and then um, pass this string. Um, so when we're passing an array, uh, okay, draw text is looking for particularly a string value. So you can't just put an array value here. It won't return anything. It'll just be an in, invalid, invalid. It doesn't, deep down, it needs, there's three equal signs in there that it's looking for. And it's different value type. So it's not matching, so it won't work. So you just type in string, uh, which is some GML, encapsulate your array right there. So we're looking for the contestant's array passing in a random number that we've randomized. Uh, and we're turning this entire value into a string, and then we're drawing that as a, as a, um, as a text. And I'm drawing it with a shadow, and it's also all it really does is draw a shadow on it. So yeah, that's it for the code. You put the, the object in the room, and that's all you have to do. It, you don't even have to put it in a specific place, because we're saying all X and Ys are room width and room height. Uh, we also did an H align to, F -face to, the, to center, so you can face it center, face left, face right. Um, I did uh, align center just because it looked better. I made all the art and all the sound effects, all the particle effects, everything in this. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you did enjoy it, please smash that like button. Um, share this with somebody if you think it's interesting or something they would want to know about. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like it, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting me. All my Patreon supporters, I love you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.